Now that we have a basic interface where we can start it up and click to create squares, what we need to do is create the actual simulation itself where we go through one step of Conway's life. At the moment, I don't have any way to do that. I just have the grid, so I'm going to need to create some buttons at the bottom. So I'm going to create three J buttons. So J button step. It's a new J button. And I'm going to say step there. I also need start to actually start the simulation running multiple times and stop. And I also need some place to put these. So I'm going to create a container, which is going to be in the south, which is going to be a grid. So container. South is a new container. I need to create that. So uh, right after I do this border layout and add the panel in, I should create the south container and add things to it, in particular those three buttons. So south is created just above. Now I need to actually set its layout. I believe it's one, three. I believe that's columns and rows. Rows and columns? Whatever it is, I'll figure it out in a sec if it's in the wrong order. Next, I should add in the three buttons. So south.add step. And then start. And then stop. So add those three in. Then I need to actually add this to the frame. And I should add it to the south. So let's take a look at that, see if that's right. There we go, cross the way. Step, start, stop. So I should actually make it so that these buttons can be pressed on. I mean, you can click them now, but they aren't going to do anything, which means I need to add an action listener. So I need to add this action listener in interface, and it's going to complain until I add by clicking there or by putting in yourself action performed. So action performed is the event called when you press a button. In particular, what I need to do is check to see if the step button has been pressed. So if e dot get source, that's the source of the click, equals step. So if that's what I want, then I need to actually take one step. Now, when I do the start button, I'm going to have to do this over and over again. So it's probably a good idea to actually make step a method. So I'm going to create a method called step and call it here. Notice I put open and close parentheses afterwards to make it a method. And just underneath this, I'll create the step method. So each time I take a step, I'm going to do this function once. So now I actually have to figure out neighbors. So when I'm looking at a particular square, I need to count the eight neighbors around it and see if any of them are alive. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a loop that goes through the entire grid, and it's going to check to see if the upper left neighbor is alive, the one above it, upper right, and so on. So to begin with, I'm going to create a pair of for loops, which are going to do this. So I'm going to iterate over my grid length. I'm going to do it again. for my grid length. So i and j are going to represent every square in the grid. All right, now I need to actually start figuring out if a particular square, if its neighbors are alive. I'm going to have to have some way of counting that, so I'm going to create an int here, which is going to be my neighbors. Neighbor count starts at 0. So to begin with, let's do the one directly above the square. 
So I'm going to use, rather than i, let's actually use x and so j, let's use y. I think that makes more sense for going up and down for y and going left to right for x. So x is going to be my <coughs> uh, column, and y is going to be my row. So if grid x, y would be where we're at. So if I want to go one above where I'm at, that's going to be y minus 1. If that's true, that means that that square is alive, and I should add one to neighbor count. Now there's going to be an error here, which is when the first row, when I try and go to y minus 1, I'm going to go grab something that's not there, because there is no row above where I'm at. So I need to make sure that I check to see if y is greater than 0 before I do this. This is called a short-circuited AND statement. If y is equal to 0, which is in the case in the top row, it's not going to do the second half of this AND statement. The reason being that if y is not greater than 0, this AND statement means that if this is already false, you don't need to bother with the right side of the statement, because it's going to be false no matter what this is. So it doesn't even bother doing this, which also means it's not going to get an error. So this is a guard to make sure I don't go off the top of the array. All right. So what's next? Let's do one to the left. I got to make sure that x is greater than 0. And grid x minus 1 y is true. So if that one's alive, we're going to add one to the neighbor count. 